What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? I'm BDLM, coming with my buddy J4Y, bringing you episode number 27 of this Dota on the Man podcast. What is going on, my friend? I am stuffed to the brim of Chipotle goodness, thanks to your uh, choices in life. You know, I can't yeah. say I can't say I am for the better now. So, uh, yeah, appreciate that. You know, how, how well. are you? I'm assuming similar in fashion. I am a little heavier at the moment, hmm. just a tiny bit. Um, yeah, sorry we're coming to you guys a little late this evening. I actually I have a class now for a couple weeks. My last college class. Woo! <laughs> So it is in the evening and runs into casting time. So our cast is going to be coming to you Wednesdays around eight, eight thirty, nine ish, somewhere in that so range for a couple of weeks. After hours, except we're yes. not going to try to be really. the same yeah. theme of after hours. <laughs> but well, we might dip, so. might dip into that, you know, depending. <laughs> yes, apologies. Also tonight we are going to be going a little bit shorter because last week we had bunk on, which was awesome, but that cast went for like an hour and forty five minutes because there was so much to talk about with our buddy. So some of you have said, Hey guys, why don't you do a shorter cast so I can actually like listen to it on the drive to work or yada yada yada. So we are gonna try to keep it short and concise tonight for you guys. Try keep giving us comments. Yeah, try. So, you know, keep feeding us comments. We are going to keep trying new stuff, try and make it as best as it can possibly be for you guys because you all are nice enough to tune in. Thank you very much. It's very as, true. as for what we're talking about tonight, um, games we've played recently, which are actually really awesome because they tie in some of the stuff we talked about last week as well. And then, of course, Ogre Magi, which also ties into the games that we've been playing recently. For better or for worse. <laughs> yes. For better or for worse. So I guess a good way to start this off is what do you, you think was the favorite thing of yours that we, we got to mess around with this week? Oh, I don't like that way you're starting. Because well, I'm gonna, no, I'm gonna to twist it. Way, I'm gonna twist it. Okay, go for I it. don't want to talk about the first game we played because I think that's gonna be a good lead-in for later. So I'm okay. gonna start with our second game we played, All right. which involves me on Drow Ranger, the mm. the most exciting of all exciting heroes, I would think. And uh, you were playing Beastmaster Mid, which was uh, you know pretty much out of your element. So pretty well, solo mid-wise, kind of out of your element, I would think. Yes. So. Uh, so, I mean, that was an overall a very interesting game, to say the least. I guess we'll just... Uh, do you remember all the things? I remember my lane specifically. I was with uh, a Jakiro. Yes. So was me we also had Jakiro. Spirit Breaker. Yes. I don't remember who was supporting Spirit oh, Breaker. Oh, uh, Ancient Apparition. Yeah, that's right. Ancient Apparition. Which is really nice, because I think, as you guys can tell, Spirit Breaker and Ancient Apparition, I mean, they go together really well. Just because you have all that global presence. So you can actually line up the Ancient uh, Apparition like, all the time while he's charging. What are you talking about? What the hell? <laughs> what the hell is Sergi at all? <laughs> Dude. Oh, it's beautiful. And then, of course, with the Primal Roar, like you can really just get the jump in on somebody. And that's right. what we actually did quite a few times, right? Roam around, and then ulti right before Spirit Breaker got into there and then he was able to just charge hit them. Of course this whole time Ancient Apparition could be channeling his ulti depending on where he was far away, you know, aiming it, not really channeling it. Um, so and it actually worked out really well. Then Drow can just turn on Frost Arrows and it's just all over. Yeah. That's pretty actually, much I, what happened. I thought it was a really neat game because I talked a while ago about how I wanted to mess with Beastmaster more. And I was thinking today actually it's really kind of funny how many different things you can do on him as a hero, and it still be completely viable. And I actually, after I was thinking that, I watched a game that was played yesterday. It was Dara versus Navi. Navi picked up Beastmaster, and they actually picked up Aghanim Scepter and Blink Dagger on him. Hmm. So he was just initiate all the way. Like, not only could he jump on top of somebody to try and Primal Roar them, but the Aghanim Scepter gives you additional range as well. So he's just in there, able to initiate just fine for the team. I actually picked up Assault Curious, uh, Drums of Endurance. Yeah. <laughs> worked out really well. Is I was trying to think it? what else it was. But it was good enough, because it was like, uh, Spirit Breaker, he kind of really needs some help. So I'll get him the AC, give him that extra attack speed so he can bash more. Oh, worked out really well. So how how was, how was the drowning? Oh, the beginning of the game was really unfortunate, to say the least. Uh, as, as well, BDM has been discovering recently, I like to play very aggressively in the laning phase, for better or for worse, which we'll probably get into more about the second game, but, uh, yeah, I, and of course I was Drow, so, I mean, how aggressive can I really be? But it was me and Jakiro versus uh, Doombringer, and, uh, oh gosh, who was it? It was someone else who was really annoying. And they just did a ton of burst damage. 
uh, especially Doomringer, as I discovered, when he has a uh, level death, and you're the right level, uh, apparently it does half your health and damage. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think I started the game like 0-4 or something. Yet I maintain like the highest creep farm throughout the game. So I was doing a good job lasting, which with Drow is like a no-brainer because you get all that agility. And then your ultimate is just, hey, let's just throw on more agility. Why, why not? So yeah, last and sitting, precision aura as well. Oh yeah, and I was so. I was maxing. I was prioritizing the precision aura, t- and especially because we had such a nice range. Well, okay, me and Jakiro were a good lane. I guess the whole team wasn't benefiting as much. Uh, you know, your 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 quill beast or whatever. There you go. That, that aura of course. Just, you know, penetrating people with those those quills. Ancient apparition was uh, fascinating. The, probably the best auto attacker you know. I can think of in the game is ancient apparition. Every little bit helps, am I right? <laughs> I mean, you know, how many times have you lived with like four health? Like plenty. Well, we had we were stacking up some so. auras and some things like because you had your taxi aura, I had my precision aura. Um, what was I thinking? Ancient Apparition had lower magic resist in an area, sort of like an aura, and then the Spirit Breaker aura with move speed. Yeah. So, you know, we were just like, stacking up. I mean, I would love to play Beast Match that way anyway, and I actually, I leveled uh, Wild Axis, prioritized that, and then went for Inner Beast after that, and wound up going Call of the Wild last uh, leveling up my ulti, of course, whenever I could. But, yeah, it was just like, well, Spirit Breaker. And then, of course, Drow doesn't really need a whole lot of items. I knew you were having trouble anyway, so I'm like, if I can get specifically Assault Curious, like, that's just going to help everyone out. And it really did. I mean, just team fights was, were fantastic. And, of course, with Drums as well, we actually, to win the game, we just wiped them, took down the Tier 3 tower, took down the Raxes, and then just went to the, the Nexus. Cause <laughs> yeah, it was literally one push. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just cleared it out, because just together, there was not a whole lot you can do. And then, of course, we had Jakiro for Liquid Fire. I don't know if he had it maxed by the time we pushed the Ancient, but, I mean, that's an amazing ability against towers, and I actually uh, play Jakiro not a ton. I mean, I've, I only have four games under my belt with him. Undefeated, though. You know, just throwing that out there. And every single time I go Liquid Fire prioritized because I think it's an awesome ability that is really underappreciated. He was picked up a couple times for competitively back in the day yeah. by Na'Vi, I think, for that tower-pushing potential. Like, they, I think, also picked up Enchantress to go alongside him, and they just destroyed towers because the attack speed slow is applied there. Hey, yeah, you throw a Venomancer in the mix, and you just have a swell time. Um... Yeah, I, I, I'm actually undefeated with Shakira myself, so apparently he's just <laughs> a boss. Uh, or he's, he's good with noobs, I don't know what the deal is, but uh, I, th- I do think he's underappreciated. But alas, the moral of the story is, we won that game. It, it was a kind of an interesting start, but uh, you know we kind of all really came into our own, especially the mid to late game, I mean, Drow with some good items and some good setups from Beastmaster and Spirit Breaker. No brainer, are going to you know wipe their team, so that's what happened. But it's a very good game, but now let's go into the game that it was different than the first game, I want to say, but, uh, you know, it had its cool moments, and that's what we're going to really get into here, the meat of it. Uh, I mean, I'll just start off by saying, we, you wanted to try out, and actually you mentioned in our last cast, you wanted to try a Crystal Vein Urger Magi lane and just run with it. And sure enough, that is, in fact, what we did. I was standing pretty as the big blue-headed, no, Two-headed. Blue-headed. Blue. Well, they he are blue, blue as well. He is a blue-headed, two-headed monster, but he's cuddly cute, and that's what's great. Cuddly. And then Crystal Man, I mean, what a combo right there, right? Um, you know, and you were obviously Infinity. running that as your favorite support, so uh, you want to kind of... How, how that game opened up for us? I blame you entirely. Well, of course you do. And... You know. No, see, this is one of those situations where in your head it works so well that you just try and force it, which I think is exactly what we did. (laughs) Because there were way too many times, like, not trying to call you out, because I definitely made plenty of mistakes the game myself, but you were just like, yeah, there's a full creep wave, but I'm just going to run past it just to auto-attack any mage (laughs) once. And, you know, obviously Ogre Magi is a very tanky hero who just got introduced, Um, but... It's still, it's like, oh, you take all that extra damage, and then we, like, dove way past the tower one time, and there, it was an Earthshaker supporting, and we got caught in a really bad position. But it had, it had potential, man. It had potential. Like I said, it works so well in your head, because you have two stuns, two slows. And then um, you may or may not have gone uh, an interesting item build with your money. Well, you I, uh, have to. 
I'm still not a hundred percent sure why MKB uh, was your first big item. Well, okay. Here's how in this <laughs> game, how in my mind, this game was meant to happen, and of course, it never goes the way you picture things to go. In my mind, I was gonna go bottom lane with you, get all the farm. Have a delicious time, just like free farming, like a kunkka back in the day. Like, just get all that farm, get really beefy. I could go this crazy damage item build, and just be so far ahead of everyone with my bloodlust and just my crazy attack and move speed that I would just annihilate anyone that's in my way. And like, seriously, it does work. Or did in Here's New Earth when I was playing Blacksmith, who's the same kind of hero, and I would just go Thunderclaw or uh, Maelstrom in Dota from Dota. It just go crazy attack speed, get those chain lightning procs, and just go. <laughs> oh, no one expected it because like, oh, it's it's him. Whatever. What's he gonna do? That's, and then you actually I, just surprised him with this burst damage. You're like, oh god. Um, see, a little little off beat, off the path, if you will. But you know, the main reason it didn't work, in my opinion, was like you said, we forced things that we shouldn't have forced, and then we were up against. Not only Antimage, who I believe is Ogre Magi's strongest enemy, or most feared enemy, because Ogre Magi is melee, and so is Antimage. And when Ogre Ma Ma Antimage is burning 50 mana in attack, and Ogre Magi has like one of the smallest mana pools of all the it heroes in the game, uh, you know, it starts becoming kind of a nuisance. Um, they also had a Phantom Lancer who built a Diffusal Blade. So, let's see. Let let's add up the math right quick on how fast my mana can drain uh, now, 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 now to now, about that speed. Oh, so you built the MKB because you're like, if there's no mana exactly. there to burn. Exactly. Oh, my. see, well, see what I'm thinking? Sense. Isn't it clear as a crystal? I mean, I mean, honestly, I don't yes. know how much more sense that could make. Uh, I was definitely expecting you to go for the Aghanim Scepter because it gives you the the second stun, the unrefined fire blast, which is just awesome. I mean, that got introduced relatively recently, I do believe. Yeah, that actually came out in the Dota 1. Um, I think it came with the big patch. Maybe the Christmas patch, dare I say? It was either then or it was like shortly after that. So it was around exactly. January, December time. So yeah, pretty new for all Ogre Magi players across the board. But let's not go into items too much at the moment. Let's just wrap right. up kind of what's going on in this game. So needless to say, since we weren't so happy with how the league phase is going, you can imagine how Antimage and Phantom Lancer... Uh, did oh we forgot a big part of this game? Our good mm -hmm. friend Bonk was tree and protector mid as you wanted to see as well. So this was like your game of interest. This was like I want all my dreams to come true in this game. And unfortunately, we you know opened that Pandora box and what was inside just a big sack of disappointment. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty good description. Yeah, <laughs> I mean yeah, unfortunately he was against Queen of Pain. I think he gave up a couple kills, which you know whatever, it's fine, it happens. But yeah, you know, it's just, the ulti just didn't feel as effective as it had been in the past, you know, which is probably a big part of why he was not in captain's mode for such a long time. And, you know, now that it is a smaller area, shorter duration, there's no mini stun applied to it either. You know, it's it's a little bit, I think, more difficult to make that work really well. Uh, and actually, when I was watching uh, some of the games on joint Dota, uh, I want to say Toby said that gods, it's just something where it's like, Trine doesn't do very specific things. He's just very generally like, okay, like there's not a very good niche that he fits into where he can fit into a lot of, a lot of lineups, yeah. which I think is, you know, a pretty good description of the hero. I mean, he has a lot of potential to be good at individual things, but nothing like so straightforward that can be really taken advantage of. Yeah, I mean, well, there was a couple issues also with that game of how it went. First of all, I got more Farmer's Ogre Magi than he did solo mid as Train Protector. And when you run a hero like that mid, who you know for fact is not going to gank, like, well at all, you want to hope, sincerely, that he gets a ton of farm. Like, then maybe that's his purpose, to be mid. If you're not going to gank, like the Queen of Pain did, the, like, for a whole mate, she ganked a lot. Oh, he was sitting in mid then. Well, then get all the farm. It just didn't work out that way. And so he wasn't, like, super ahead in gold, like we were kind of hoping he would be. And then his ganks, like we were saying, is not effective at all. So, you know, when that ulti is on cooldown for, uh, you know, a super long time, 
uh, you know, 115 seconds of the first rank, then two minutes, okay, now what's he going to do for the next two minutes? Well, we know he's going to farm, because there's absolutely nothing else he can help around with, uh, especially because he was maxing that living armor, which was helpful in the mm -hmm. laning phase. It was nice to have that armor and health regen, because I could be a little more aggressive and not pay for it as much, but, you know, in the same token, like we were saying, he just really doesn't do a darn thing for you. I mean, I think it would have been interesting. He went pipe, which was actually a really useful item to have. Unfortunately, I don't think we got the kind of team fights we needed, or we didn't force team fights like we should have been in the earlier parts of the game to take advantage of the fact that we got yeah. the quick pipe. But like, if he had gotten a Radiance, I wonder how it would have turned out. I mean, he would have lost a lot of his tankiness, and it probably would have been harder for him to deal with Queen of Pain. But I think if, you, if we were to try that again, because, I mean, it worked fairly well. Like, he was able to stay in the lane against Queen of Pain, who I think is very difficult for him to lane against. Did pretty well. Like I said, he gave up a kill or two, but, you know, it happens. Um, you know, I think it'd be interesting to see what would happen if he had yeah, gone the I Radiance. Yeah, I would have preferred him to go the... a damagey slash ganky kind of item instead of a protective item. Like, I feel like if you're farming up all that stuff and you're not getting... I don't know. I, yeah, I think I think I would like them with a more ta DPS item, but... Um, you know, and also I think that game would have gone better, like I said, if I didn't have to face, like, an anti-mage or a fan went to late game. Our, our lineup was just not going to win it late game, and we messed up early game. So, you know, there's a lot of factors you can blame. But at the end of the day, it was an interesting thing to try. And you know what? I did like the Crystal Main Nurgle Magi combo at the end of the day. I thought it, it really did work, so... You know. Yeah, and I mean, you think too, just even as you know, you go in the late game, if you had gone for the Aghanims, then you have two stuns, yeah. the slow, you have the AoE attack and movement speed slow, um, the quasi stun from Crystal Maiden, it's not a legitimate stun, and of course, Bloodlust, which is awesome on Ogre Magi. I think his strongest ability, I mean, well. I'm not counting multicast as an ability, <laughs> but I like, I think, you know, Bloodlust is definitely a better spell than Ignite and Fire Blast for fighting in a team. Yeah. So I, I think that's really what it is that makes him a strong hero and would give him any competitive viability if he has any. No doubt. You're talking about him as a support, obviously, because we're not going to... No, you're not going to see him farm in a pro game. I really... I highly doubt you could, but I just feel like, compared to other heroes, he's not going to be as amazing. Whereas, like, I do like him as a support roamer slash... Like, I think I like him in that roaming or trialing role, where he can set up a stun or slow really, with relative ease, that stun range isn't too small, actually, I believe. It's 600 range, so not too bad. Um, and then the Ignite is a 700 range, so not too bad and hard to set up as well. Overall, I, I you know, we, we could, for fun, see him picked up at games and just, you know, hopefully people roll the dice and see what comes out, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, it's possible. I mean, you can do potentially a lot of damage with the multicast, and Blow Loss can really bring some down quickly. We actually, we did our podcast not too long ago, which was a lot of fun, and we got to see two really cool things, and the one that is applicable to this particular conversation is Blood Loss used on Clinks, right? And what was the, oh, oh yeah. an alacrity, alacrity from Invoker. From Invoker. And being able uh. to put those two things really on any agility carry is awesome. Or then Clinks who could already pop like strafe and stuff to just be able to do a ton of damage. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Well, I didn't want to get into this too much, but I did see a couple new kind of trends in the competitive scene. I wonder if they're going to stick around. It was Clinks getting picked up uh, in general. He's gotten picked up a few times now for real serious team comps. And uh, <laughs> he's not just there for cheerleader or whatever role you want to fit him in before. Uh, although I don't think he's a very attractive cheerleader, so I wouldn't necessarily want him to do that. But regardless, um, and then Sven, used in tri-lanes to get the farm. Be like a semi-carry carry. Kind of really, it didn't blow my mind because we've seen him do it before, but the point is, is he came back. Like, where has he been all this time? Teams are like, I really want that reliable stun for the tri-lane, and that's exactly what he has, is a very reliable stun, so. Um, yeah. I don't know. I I agree. I mean, I'd love to see more Sven. I think he's a really an awesome hero, and you know, like you're saying, in the tri lane because you just are putting more heroes together, you're going to be more likely to hit more heroes with your stun, or the other team is actually going to have to really pay attention to how close they are to one another, or even once you get, you get synergy with heroes like Enigma as well, you drop the black hole, wait a second, and then you get to drop your stun on top of that, and you oh, have yeah. cleave, so you can well, do a lot of damage in those situations. You say you have cleave, but. No one really levels that to like 
late. Super late. late. But you know what was really disappointing? He was against in one of the games a brood mother. I was like, he's going to fight. Because he was in the lane against brood mother. I think he might have been soloing against. I'm like, he's going to get cleave early. And I just wanted to see him cleaving the spiralings and like being a boss. But he didn't. He still didn't get cleave till super late. And I was like, ah, this is one of your golden opportunities to get cleave. Like if you don't get it against spiralings, like ten spiralings, when else are you gonna get cleave in this game? That's but, true. I feel like one. I'd probably put like one point into it. I don't think I'd wind up thirty percent. Oh, you definitely. It's only ten percent more per level, and like until you get some big damage items or big items. Yeah, the ten percent of ten percent of sixty. Uh, you know, six more damage to each spiraling. Ha! Yeah, that's yeah. not going to make. Whereas you could do another. 75 or whatever from storm hammer maxing so obviously that should always be a priority but yeah what are you gonna the do? other cool thing we saw in our our pupcast game which by the way if you guys haven't seen I'll it you can it. go check it out yeah we just we shout casted a random game we're practicing just in case any opportunities should happen our way um but please go check it out tell us how we did leave some comments it'd be great we saw a Bat Rider jungling, which blew oh, me and Jay's yeah. mind. Somebody else was nice enough to point out that it had been done in Dota 1 before, but we had never seen it, and it was awesome. Oh my gosh. It, it works so amazingly. Uh, Except for the dying to the creeps well, at one time. But, well, you know. That's just a, that's a player fall. Aside that's not that, necessarily right? a fall of the hiccup. strategy. Not made, you're not, what? There's a little hiccup in the plan. Okay, but, Mr. Bobblehead. Whatever the hell you're doing over there. Uh, uh. Anyways, yeah, no, it's interesting. He, he obviously, you know, it's so much easier to talk from our our uh, pedestal over here because we were watching the game. Like, <laughs> why does he keep doing that? Oh my gosh! But like, I really, like he kept trying to pull stack one of the big super hard creeps, and uh, not the super creeps, but the the orange camp, I guess you want to call it. Um, and he got it to uh, at least three or four. But then at that point, as you described in the game. Uh, it gets to a point where you try to pull it, but there's just such a long, like, Congo line of creeps that by the time they all clear out of it, it's too late, and they don't respawn or a new stack. So you have to pretty much maxes out at three or four of those uh, a number of camps. And he kept trying to pull two or three more times beyond when it hit that point. So there was some wasted time for sure. But the point is, it was definitely a, something we had never seen before. It worked really great. He got, what was it, like 2,100 gold after that died? And he had his blink dagger. He didn't even get boots. He just went straight blink dagger. And he hit six, yeah. and he ganked lanes. And it was wonderful. He did so much work, and it was awesome. So, you know, there's still... I've actually, after that game, I was looking through the hero list. I'm like, what hero can I jungle with that you've never seen before? There's not a big list, honestly. <laughs> I was thinking, like, jungle Lena. No, that would not work very well. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. I, I got to jungle with Darks here for the first time, which was neat. I think it might have even been part of the, the Bat Rider, getting to see that and stacking up and using... He actually he used the smoke as well to do it. Yeah. And I'm like, oh man, you know, I haven't actually played Darks here in the jungle. I, I played him like once in the lane, didn't go so hot, so I was just like, yeah, I'm going to leave that one alone for a while. But I went back and did it, had an awesome game. I think I went like 10-4 and like 16, something like that. It was awesome. Uh, it was like the perfect setup, too, because it's against like an Ursa, a, a faceless. Like, it was just, it was just awesome. But anyway, I, I really had a lot of fun playing him. Well, Dark Seer is just fun. He's a, he's a fun hero. And like the Surge, like all, all, every single part of his thing just makes it awesome. Like the Dion Shell for crazy damage in fights, the vacuum to position things and hopefully use your ultimate in conjunction with that and like just throw people off with all those images and then. Uh, surge to make someone GTFO. You know, can't go wrong there. But well, Bonk was actually playing with me that game, and he was playing Ricky Maru, and so I was actually surging him after people, so he's getting more backstabs, which was hilarious. He was just tearing people down because between the blink strike and the surge, there was no getting away. And the vacuum, it's like get back here. I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But you know, I was thinking about I was talking about the jungle thing. I think the only position, if it was possible, I, I think I'd, I'd like Trent. As a jungler, like I said, if it was possible, which that would be not, a tough one, but like it, it really would. I mean, you could get the you could get the uh, you know Quality Blade and hit really hard, but he doesn't have the damage or the mana or anything. It's a lot of the components, which like, may or you know, may I was thinking well, maybe he can like pull creeps to the lane and get the experience from there, and then just get a Handomitis, and then just go crazy. 
But, oh, you know, honestly, good. like, I don't like him in a lane, in any lane. I don't like him ganking or roaming. I don't like him doing anything. I want him to be not a part of the game until oh. mid to late game when his ultimate's, like, awesome and he has some items. But I just couldn't figure out how to piece all that. I'm like, how can I make him not in the lane, but still be on a team? And I'm like, can you Did you over? try it? Did you make a practice game? Hey, and see if you could no. do it? That would be very challenging. Oh. I, 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 he would just be so much slower than any other jungler. That's the big problem. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to keep trying to rack my brain <laughs> about how Trin can fit in the lineup. Because at the end of the day, yeah. I don't think he's going to... Hopefully the pros can show us what, what, what he's capable of. But that's asking a lot. Anyways, let's move this along to Ogre Magi. Because we are actually starting to get close to that time limit. This is so much harder than we thought it would be, but we want to try it for you guys, so let's let's go on to Urgrim Magi, really quickly, just brief, you know, run, we've said the skill names, but just a quick little over, he's got Fire Blast, which is a nice 1.5 second stun, I already said 600 range, does decent damage, um, he's got Ignite, so he gets to throw this awesome little, it's like a bottle? Kind of like a, it is a bottle, I would say. Mm -hmm. Similar to like yeah. a, you know, alchemist fashion of bottles of sorts. Maybe they go to the same supplier. I don't know. There you go. Uh, anyways, drenches them, and it does damage over time. It slows. Uh, and then he also has bloodlust. Hey, neat ability. Increased move and attack speed of the target. Last 30 seconds. 20 second cooldown. And then multicast, which is kind of the whole point of this hero. Um, it allows you to have a chance to cast a spell multiple times. So, Fire Blast, it will cast it on the same target multiple times. Uh, with Bloodlust, you'll cast it, if you get a multicast, it'll cast it on multiple units in the area you cast on. So if you cast on yourself and there's like two minions next to you and it multicasts, now the minions are also Bloodlusted. Yay! Um, and then, oh, sorry, the Ignite. I skipped over that. When you throw Ignite on the target, don't you shake your head at me, good sir. <laughs> when you throw Ignite on someone, it does it in an AoE instead of on just a single target. And then, oh, Unrefined Blast. Well, that's part of Agumon's. Then there's Agumon's Scepter, which gives you refi Unrefined Blast. It gives you a new spell, which is actually really cool. We kind of briefly touched on that. But it's essentially the same thing as Fire Blast, except longer cooldown, way more mana, and that's actually that's about it. it. So, yeah. there's Urgur Magi. Yeah. I. It's sort of important to note, I guess, when you're leveling up the, the multicast, it'll either cast your Fire Blasts more time, or have a chance to cast them more times, or make your AoEs larger for your Ignite, and for the uh, the area of the Bloodlust effect. In doodly. So, yeah, you said, so, interesting hero. We've kind of described how we used him a little bit. Uh, obviously, he's not, well, he's not really picked up in he wasn't in the Dota 1 scene, like, very rarely at all, if ever. But he's such a fun hero. He's definitely a fun hero. Probably one of the most fun, just because of how random he really is. Um, but they did a good job with the ultimate making it so it's not completely random that he's going to multicast. Like, as you level it up, it's definitely a bigger, much bigger chance you're going to get some kind of level of multicast. It might not be the one you want, but at least you did something in a team fight. So it's not like nothing or anything. It's not like there's, there's an in-between, I guess. But... Uh, I don't know. Do you do you uh how do you like this hero overall? Uh I like him for the most part. I mean like I said I think Bloodlust is definitely the most powerful thing in this kit because, you know, if you're a good player and you're gonna be able to keep your head up in the team fights and uh, pay attention to really who should be focusing with this bloodlust, you know, castle on the carry and then maybe you'll be lucky enough to, you know, get it on somebody else and actually I believe the cooldown gets shorter. Of what? The cooldown of Bloodlust Zekic or shorter no, when you uh, with the the which Medili? The no, all right. No, oh Bloodlust. No, 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 oh no. yeah, it does. It reduces the Bloodlust cooldown, seconds, increases bro. area effect. Oh snap! So you can actually keep that up on yourself very easily and then cast it on other people in team fights. So you can really keep it up on most people um, during those long engagements, yeah. which is really nice. It goes down um, to a five second cooldown when you've multicast level three. <laughs> yeah, really awesome. And, you know, I think if you are able to get some farm and you don't think that MKB is maybe what you want to grab, you could go for the Aghanim Scepter and then <laughs> give yourself a second stun that also has the chance to proc multiple times with the multicast, which I think is just awesome. You, I, I, I see that jab, sir. You, you try to sneak it in there, but... Ja jab? J jabs? 
I, I haven't jabbed in my life. So Mm-mm. I've All been crosses. jab free Just... since I was born. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I do think the, the, the real way to build up, yes, okay, go for Agamons. I, I'll give you that. But it's a fun way is to build up damage. It is totally legit because of mul- because of Bloodlust. It's legit. Okay, oh, I'm sorry, 50% attack speed? Oh, oh, that can't be helpful when you're auto-attacking? Oh, wait, yes, it can. It's interesting. No, you're not going to be a hard carry. There's no way he'll ever stay up to Anti-Mage or Phantom Lancer or Spectre. But That's he'll do a hell of a job killing the supports. That's what I like to do with them. Fact. You run up, you fire blast the support. Notice I say support. You always focus fire supports on him, no matter what. That is your number. <laughs> that is your number one duty. I don't care how you build him. Focus fire supports because you can situations. literally no. Just when you might no. want to stun other there is no way perhaps. anyone can prove me wrong ever. Oh, Enigma's channeling his ulti. Get the crystal maiden. Quick. <laughs> <laughs> what if she was channeling oh, her ultimate too at the same time? Then you gotta. You laugh. Hey, Enigma is kind of supporty. Oh, that's who the hero was. This is completely related back to the first thing. That uh, be- it was Doombringer and Enigma Uh-oh. support. He literally was a support in that lane. Wow. So, ha, like- it can work. And it was terrible, but it can work. <laughs> Anyways. <clears throat> yeah, so, you're, you're, but you're really, he is a great asset in those team fights. Because, like I said, if you get like that, let's say you have level 3 multicast, you have a chance to cast four times. So you can get a four-time fire blast. Which does four times two hundred and seventy five damage, which is equivalent to about eleven hundred damage before uh magic resist. So doing eleven hundred damage to a support at the start of a fight, if you get lucky, boom, he's almost dead, if not dead. And then, you know, couple that with bloodlust like you were saying. Amazing for anyone, but especially your carry. You know, let him run around faster, attack tons faster. That's a free hyperstone plus Yasha almost. I don't know. I'm trying to combine items that just isn't there. Don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> but at the end of the day, I see all these abilities are really good. If he was, like, ranged, then he'd be an amazing <laughs> support. Seriously, that's, like, the one thing he's missing is being ranged. I mean, I think you, I could see him... I mean, I, I don't think you're going to find competitively many situations where you're just going to be like, feed the Ogre Magi. No. But I could definitely see there potentially being a thing where, you know, let him get... Arcane boots because I think those are necessary because, like you said, you know he doesn't have the biggest mana pool. His strength gain is really high for an intelligence hero. Uh, so you know, let him get the arcane boots so he can keep up harassment. And you know, once you do get the multicast, that's the one thing I, I sort of don't like about him in maybe a roaming situation is the multicast is so good. You really do want to get some levels on him. And that's sort of, I guess, the other problem with wanting to play him as a support, too, because, it's like, well, you're going to be pulling creeps, you know, you're going to be off the side. Sometimes, you know, if your carry is safe, you're going to just want to be away so that he can get more levels. You know, that's maybe the trade you're making there, which is a little unfortunate, that you're not going to be able to get as many levels in the multicast as quickly as you might like. Yeah, okay, when I was talking about Chartland, you're right. He, he, I think I don't like him in the roaming, I guess, level-wise. He'll be good at it, but you're right. The more, the uh, quicker you can get that multicast up, oh, he's just so much more effective at ganking. I mean, that's just... I mean, that, I, you, okay, that goes with that. Who, which hero doesn't benefit from getting that ultimate leveled up? But sure, but uh, especially a guy like Urkham Magi who rolls the die on his ultimate in the first place. It's a chance to do better. So if you could increase those odds... Uh, you know, for all those poker players out there and whatnot, uh, this should be a pretty no-brainer that you want to get him some levels. I am not a good poker player, so I don't know why I play Ogre Magi. It showed. I think I'm 0-3. No, I won one game. I did win one. So I think a player disconnected. I don't remember, but I did, did you, win a game. Did you build MKB that game? I was support. I was it's support, no. but I, it is a no. I was, no, so I was saving I my just, troll build for you. So 100% of the time that you build MKB, you lose. And on 100% of the time... Oh, wait, no, not 100%, because you said you played three. Oh, 100% of the time, so no, time I've built uh, an Agamons I've won. Well, there Another you go. Game, I didn't get to an Agamons. So. I like that one. <laughs> Proven science here. Dota on a man podcast. Don't build MKB. <laughs> build Agamon Scepter. I refuse to believe that. There you go. You know, I... I do love his burst potential. He can actually clear out creep waves pretty easily in the late part of the game, which is nice, but it's like, 
you know, I think you need the second level of your ultimate in order to be able to blanket a creep wave in your ignite, mm. which is unfortunate. So you have to be level 11 before you can really start farming quickly. He's an awful but farmer. Until you get, to, like, level 2 in the ultimate, yeah. But still, he's not great, because it takes a while for that ignite to tick down. It takes up to seven, it takes 7 seconds at the last rank of it to do its full damage, so... You know, you're waiting for the creeps to tick, 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 and you have to be, you just have to be pretty good at last hitting, which, unfor which fortunately for me I was, but, because he was a really good attack point, it's really quick. He just slams that big club down, and that's a kill. But, uh, also, by the way, I did not rush MKB. I got drums. Just that's saying. true. You did get which the is drum. a nice team fighting item, and I used all four charges. I was proud of that. Because normally when I get an item like drums, I never use the stacks. I just completely don't think about it, so. Uh, yeah. yeah, overall, though, hopefully, I think this hero, I think he should get picked up. I'm just, that's my, my personal opinion. Yeah. He won't, but, you know. <laughs> oh, see, if you get a Chaos Knight introduced coming up in the new thing, there's... You just random everything. Random blade is random. So, you know, anything can go. You, <laughs> you either get double killed or get the double kill. That's the beauty of that lane. Oh, that should just... I, I don't know how beautiful that should happen. that is, but... Oh yeah, I was going to say more things on Chaos Knight, and I'm going to cut myself short, because that is definitely going to come up in the near future. We are actually running out of time here. So, you got any, you got any closing I, thoughts? This is so hard to stop. I, I have so much I do. to share. I know. I'm having fun. But having fun <sighs> isn't hard when you <sighs> have a library card. There's some wisdom anyway. instilled in you. <laughs> One of those few things you picked up from your childhood that really should have stayed there, Thank huh? you, Arthur. <laughs> Anyway, uh, here's here's my question for you. Sure. I, I'm gonna give you some homework over the next week, my friend. Oh god. For some, uh, I know. For some, some you know, homework for next cast. Mm -hmm. What heroes are you gonna play between now and next week? Or are you interested in playing between now and next week that you you haven't really played a lot? That you just wanna you know take for a spin. Got anybody? I haven't played a lot of heroes actually, <laughs> which right. is pretty well, bad. Here's part of the homework. <laughs> I can tell you which one I haven't and I won't play. It's Tiny. That's not what I asked at all. I will never play Tiny. But... Great. Uh, okay, I guess to answer your question... Crobolus? You're playing Crobolus this week? I've played her like three times. Where have you been? A whole three. That's more than a lot of these other heroes. <laughs> uh, um, uh, you know who I'd like to play some more? Who? Do you? Yes. Silencer. Uh... <laughs> Um, no, oh, really quickly, there was a game. There was a know, game? I don't know if it was the Dare Navi game or not. I watched a couple games just yes. really quickly, like I wasn't paying attention or taking notes or anything, where I was like, there was a Lashrac, an Enigma, an SK, and I'm like, of all the games where Silencer could be picked up and just be awesome. Oh, yeah. This is the one. And I was waiting. They had the, it was the last pick on the team again, so I'm like, come on, just do oh, it. Oh, Sven. Sven. Didn't, didn't work. Sven, huh? Sven. So you're gonna say some some Sven, some Death Prophet? All right. You just you threw in the Death Prophet. That wasn't even my choice. But thank Those you for including that. Your choice. And how about you? Two two choices for you. Who are you gonna play? Oh, uh, I well, I like I said, I had a lot of fun playing a Dark Seer who I was like. Uh, how about heroes before. you haven't played? No, I know. I'm just saying that was one that I haven't played that I did and I liked it. Well, good job. Um, thanks. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I actually really do want to practice more with Chen and Enchantress, oh which I think would be really nice. I'm definitely going to play some more Beastmaster. I actually really want to play Tinker. That was like five heroes. Can you make a I know. Two oh, of those? so excited. Because we're playing apparently just two games. So which two heroes <laughs> are you going to pick? Okay. Tinker, Chen. Okay. And then we get to report back next week. And you guys get to hear about how terribly they went. Or amazing, one or the other. Indeed. Well, thanks for tuning in, guys. For oh, another. no, 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 no. Oh, Gotta that's give right. Gotta get a key. Oh, that's right. We, we almost, almost got away with it. Away. If it wasn't for that rascal okay. kid. Uh, <laughs> so anyways. Go ahead and, and, and give it out, my Congratulations. friend. Congratulations. Whoops. Clicking is hard. Congratulations to Mick Smullen, who has won the key for liking us Boom. on Facebook and following us on Twitter. But hey, if you didn't win, don't fret. There's, there's probably, I want to say probably, I mean definitely more opportunities coming your way. Uh, so definitely stay tuned with us. Keep in tune with our, our Twitter, our Facebook. We're going to keep posting stuff. Be on the lookout, as well as tune in, of course, to our new episodes. We actually uh, are switching to uh, Twitch.tv instead of owned for our live streams. So we'll give you the info on that. 
Um, so you can tune in live with us and keep get these chats and everything's just really going, you know, pumped up. Uh, but regardless, thanks for tuning in. Go ahead, finish us out here like a boss. Thank you very much for tuning in, guys. We will see you next week for episode number 28 of our Dota on the Man podcast. See you then.